Hello everyone and welcome to another Star Citizen, Addicts Anonymous, and today we're going to do something really cool. We're going to get into a ship that wasn't just announced, but it was also put on sale and delivered all in the same day. Wait a second, we are talking about Star Citizen now, aren't we? Yes, we are. But there's a very unique situation that sometimes arises, and that's CIG keeps something from us and then puts it up for sale. And I think the last time that happened was probably the Gladius. It wasn't one that went direct to sale, though. The Gladius was a, a ship that was put through the pipeline faster. And it has one thing in common with this ship, and it's that they're both needed for Squadron 42. Yes, I bought the Liberator version of it because I got it during the CitizenCon event. And I think that this ship is some of the most fun that I've had. But I'm going to say this. There was a point where Tony Zerbeck at his panel said that ship prices in the beginning were very arbitrary. But now they have a very complex equation for figuring out what the cost is. And the cost is going to be something that has to do with durability, the amount of armor it has, the weapons it has, the systems it has, the thrusters and propulsion units. I guess that falls under systems. The amount of quantum fuel or other types of fuel that it carries. So at $330 US, we're starting to see why some of the ships cost as much as they do and why some don't cost much at all. And that might have a lot to say for what the potential cost of the Kraken is. I've been sitting here thinking 1500 to 2000 and then I'm realizing it's not really an Idris, it's not really a Javelin, so maybe it's going to be priced more like a Pioneer. And I'm going to stick with that. I think the Kraken will be priced more like a Pioneer. But I've been very happy that CIG decided to give us this ship. And to give us this ship now. And in reality, there really isn't a use for this ship today in the game. There will be when we start having our own bases. Mostly out in the null security or you know, far away from UEE patrolled space. Far away from the advocacy. Or when CIG starts giving us some missions where we can actually go and attack pirate bases as a group. I love the multi-deck layout of the ship. I think it works and it makes a lot of sense because I've seen a lot of cargo ships and drop ships in the past use a similar model. If you ever look at a C-130, a C-5, a C-17, the flight deck is up and the cargo deck is down. And this is more like an Osprey. Right, and the Osprey is a single deck ship, but still, I love the feel of this. I do. I wish there was a compartment for the commander, but there's just not enough room. And in the field, you got to take what you can get bathrooms with showers, all sorts of wonderful things here. A lot of smoke coming out of different places for effect, but in real life, if we saw that much steam coming out of a ship that was supposed to be in space, we'd have a little bit of a problem. But I do like the closed off cockpit because it gives the pilot a little bit more, I would say it gives him a little bit more protection or gives her a little bit more protection. I'm also very happy, surprised, ecstatic. No, I'm just very happy with the performance of this ship. It does actually maneuver very well, which I think it's going to have to when trying to set down on planets where you have a lot of any aircraft, any ship weaponry being fired at you. On the outside, we see the typical nature of turrets in the game in the middle and then we see something new on the ends we pass those remote turret operators positions but it's also got two man turrets 
I am so against manned turrets right now, and when I say manned turrets, I don't mean remotely operated by the AI in the ship that I want. I want stations like they just like they have on here that have remote weapons connected to them. I think that the remote weaponry that you operate from a station in the spaceship is going to be much more useful and much more fun than sitting inside of a man turret and trying to hit things. In the past, I've used the B-29 as an example. I could also use the Black Widow as an example, where the turrets on those two aircraft back in World War II were actually 100% remote. It was people sitting in different stations that had access to them, and in some cases, one person could actually train up to three of those weapons on a target. I think that's something that CIG is going to have to revisit in the future. Here I am looking at the star map, which I still find to be one of the most incredible things in the game. I love the way that you access the star map and use it to get around. I wish there was a quick um, feature getting you to different places. I also wish that you didn't have to look at your arm to access it, and I'm sure you don't, but for that time that I was trying to access it on the radar screen, I just think it needs its own screen somewhere. At some point, we're all going to be flying ships that are much bigger, and I think those rooms are going to have a navigation area that will have a display that will have the star map on it. But in the cockpit, I find bringing up F1 to be or F2, I think it's F2, to bring up the star map is a little bit immersion breaking. Nonetheless, I love the star map. What's going on right now is that we're calibrating. We're calibrating a jump to one of the Lagrange points or Lagrange points. I don't know how they say it, but this will be where you find the rest stops. You're also going to find some asteroids out there, so when you come out of you know, your quantum leap. Oh boy. <laughs> you got to be very careful because sometimes it puts you very, very close to one of those asteroids. So we're going to make a jump over to CL2 and we are going to make, or CRUL2, and we are going to take a look at the rest stops. I Every time I quantum jump or quantum leap, as I've been calling it personally for the last little bit, I take a look at my ships and just see the amazing graphics and how they work in here. I love the quantum jump. I do. I, and sometimes I do it just so I could see that effect. Now, quantum jumping does have a detriment now, and that's fuel. And this ship carries a ton of it. Quantum fuel is fuel that you cannot refuel on your own. Hydrogen fuel, should you have... And, and this is something I'm kind of confused at. I thought the whole point of the Origin 100i was that it, it it was one of the first ships with a refinery at that level to turn hydrogen into fuel. So it was able to go further. And this ship, I don't know if that's something it has. Is that something these ships have now where you don't have to worry about hydrogen fuel? Kind of confused at that, but I'm sure it's something that will be more apparent as time goes on. Right now, at the point that we're in, in the PTU, I don't think we have to worry about that. So we're headed off to what looks like one of the rest stops. And we're going to come into it, and I'm going to, I'm going to really go slow here because I want everyone to get the idea of how incredibly immense these structures are. You know, at the very end of this video, you're going to see, because we all stood in front of a Starfarer and looked up at it and said, wow, that's a big ship. And this is the first time in the game you could actually transition right into one of the hangars and into one of your ships and then out, right out into the game. So we're going to see that at the very end. But for now... What we're going to do is we're going to interact with this rest stop, see what they're about, and, well, just 
get a feel for what rest stops are going to be. Now rest stops are going to have many different models. Currently, this is the only model in the game. Now rest stops are also modular, so they could very quickly change what each one of them look like in the future. Currently, like I said, every time you go to one of these um, rest areas, Lagrange points, you're going to find one of these rest areas, and they're all going to be this model. Now that is something that CIG will fix, and over time you're probably going to see, well, maybe at a place that's really pretty and well kept, like around Terra, you'll find some pretty amazingly upscale rest stops. It's like driving through Maryland on 95. But in other places, like driving through Jersey on 95, you're going to find some okay, not ratty, but sometimes partially run, run down, but mostly okay. And then in other states, you're going to find run down ones, right? So I think that's something that you're going to find. I'm doing a walk around on my ship real quick because I just wanted to, well, every time I get out of it, I'm amazed with it. I did come out the side door, and there's no way to get back in there because right now grabbing, pulling yourself up, climbing is not in the game. We saw that part of the game, those, those functions, those abilities, showed off inside of Chris Roberts' presentation. Right, so as we come up to the elevator, it should be right here, and it is. Don't fret, the elevators at the rest stop do not have sounds for ascending and descending. So when you hit that button, it actually is working. I'm sure it's something that by the time 3.3 goes live will be implemented. Right now, they're working on the, the blockers to release more than the polishing pieces, which would be putting different graphics, you know, fixing graphical glitches like that. We just saw that guy jump. At times we see some graphics glitch out. All those things are going to be for later. So we've got this area over here at the end. It looks like it has about four or, yeah, I think it's about four areas. Yeah, we've seen that TV in many places showing the speed commercial. Here's Platinum Bay. I can only think that, you know, at first I thought this was going to be a clothing store, then I thought maybe it would be a ship store, but coming up to this placeholder, I'm feeling that Platinum Bay might be a place to buy parts for your ship. Or it might be, well, I don't know what it is. I haven't read the lore on it, so I'm not even going to try. It could be anything. Going down this corridor, which was to the right as you came off of the launch area, is just a little place to sit down and watch. Some of the rest stops in the U.S. have areas, scenic views, or they have areas where you could just watch the road, which I find very weird. Okay, so lots of posters around, lots of artwork here. Not that hammerhead poster, though. Walking straight back, you can take a look at some of the architecture and systems, but straight back from the launch area is what looks like Koval Kovalex shipping, or it could be somebody else's shipping and just a Kovalex box there. Right now, there is nothing that you can do here at this rest stop. I'm not sure if any missions end here yet. I haven't gotten one that does. And I'm not sure if you could bring stuff out here and sell it. I haven't tried that yet. Really, these areas are just for looking around. We're going to go up now. And this is the second level. And, you know, when I was looking at it, I thought there would be more than two levels. But two levels is fine for now. And there's going to be an unstocked cassava up here. And I could only imagine that... This will just have a smaller selection of the gear that you could buy over at Cassaba on Port Alisar because we're literally still in the influence of the Crusader planetary system. And of course there's live fire weapons over here. Again, I would just expect a smaller selection of weapons that are similar to the ones over on Port Alisar. I think that's something that they're going to try to keep consistent is that when you go to a certain planetary system, 
you get certain items. That's why one of the things that are on the, I guess, what is it called? The developer's report, the roadmap, is that they have Hurston gear, and then, of course, R-Corp gear will come. And Well, there's mic Microtech gear, so you'll have gear for each one of the different planets. I wonder how long they can keep that up, because there's quite a number of planets in the universe. Now, I don't know what Stegman's is. I have to look that up. To me, it sounds like an outdoor type of outfit, maybe more rugged, maybe pioneers, but I'm not sure. In reality, there should be a restaurant and a bathroom area on a rest stop. I don't see any of that right now. I don't know how realistic we want to hold CIG to, what, what level of realism we want to hold them to. That's pretty much it for the rest stop. It wouldn't be that big. Most rest stops aren't. The only disappointment I have is no eating and, well, rest area, no bathrooms. But all in all, it's a video game, and really, do we have to have bathrooms on everything? That's a question, right? So what I'm going to do over here is file a claim on my 600 because I went to go use it in the hangar, and it was missing all the doors and cargo bays. So I thought about it, and I said, you know what, I'm going to take the Starfarer. I already projected this. Your ship has been delivered to the and I'm going to put the Starfarer inside of my, well, not my hangar, but inside one of the hangars here, Hangar 1. And then we're going to have a little bit of an issue. Let's go. Hangar. Again, when you're on the elevators, no sound. Don't worry. We're going to go down to the hangar bay, and it's going to be humongous. I mean, like, this could fit. I think it might even be able to fit a hammerhead. I'm not sure, but it might be able to. Let's take a look at it and see how big it is. Well, maybe not a hammerhead, but this thing is humongous. Do you see it? This is my Starfarer. I should say, this is the Starfarer that CIG allows the Imperators, maybe the Centurions also, to fly around in each month. I really like this ship, and it's been one of my favorites for quite a long time, but I don't fly it much because I'm not very deep into the cargo running at this point. But I have learned my way around this ship, very quickly getting to areas when I need to at this point. So getting to the cockpit is just a couple of seconds, and bam, you're there. So there's a lot of things that change with each iteration of the game, and one of those things would be when you go from the live server to the PTU, your keyboard and HODES commands are all messed up. So I'm about ready to have an accident because of that situation. So one of the things I wanted to show off here before we have fun watching my accident is we have complete transition from a hangar to flying off in space. And that's something I've been waiting for for a very long time because my hangars matter. So at this point, my wheel that I have assigned to stray forward and back was went, well was twisted in a direction that was full straight forward. It took me a second to realize what was going on. You see the right now you see the engines have stopped. That's because I figured out what was going on. Once I looked on the outside, I was able to see. All right, I have no thrust, but I have that going on, so it must have been straight forward and back. And then we can go, and that is just amazing. I know it's just not a wow, it's a meh, yeah, that was cool. But being able to go from walking around in a rest stop to getting into their hangar system to launching your ship, I had a lot of fun with that. That, that to me, was something that was projecting how great it was going to be in the future. 
And that brings us to the end. And thank you so much, folks, for watching and listening. Don't forget to click that thumbs up button if you feel like you like the episode. If you do subscribe, click the notification icon so you get notified of all my future videos. If you want to help out the channel just a little bit more, go to patreon.com forward slash Batgirl. Patreon allows you to support the artist of your choosing with as little as a $1 a month contribution that helps an artist fund everything it takes to do whatever they're doing, whether it be singing, making videos like myself, writing, or other types of artwork. Artists usually have different benefits for different funding levels, so be sure to take a look at my page and others over on Patreon.com. And with that said, folks, you all be safe out there, and I will talk to you soon.